Hey everyone, before we get into the video today, I just want to say something really quickly. This review is spoiler free, however, I will be mentioning some very mild details to explain why I like these specific things throughout the film, through points and some footage, but nothing that reveals any character decisions, plot points or story arcs. Please enjoy the video. Hey everyone, my name is Jim Bob. How the hell are ya? So yeah, it's rare I talk about new releases now unless it's something I really enjoy and think is worth a video, if it's worth the effort, if it's worth the time and the editing. But this movie definitely did that for me, so let's go. Ryan and the Last Dragon I think is the best original sort of Disney film that they've made in such a long time. I mean the last time I recall Disney making anything original other than sequels to already successful products or live action remakes was 2016 with the releases of Moana and Zootropolis. But since then it's just been Disney making lifeless rehashes of already great classics or terrible mediocre sequels but this movie really pleasantly surprised me. Lately, in the form of original concepts, Pixar seem to be the ones that are thriving at the moment, but Disney seem to be on this, like, verge of, like, remaking everything. It pretty much seems at this point that all Disney cared about was money. <laughs> money, money, money. Like, for example, they give us Milan, which is, like, full of cultural inaccuracies. They give us The Lion King, which has got no value or effort or anything put into it whatsoever. Nothing that can make you reflect on the film and think that, yeah, this is going to go down in the history books as something memorable. So, yeah, Disney's track record over the past couple of years has clearly made them and painted them out to be the sort of company that really only cares about money. Like, they're just greedy bastards. But there's actual love and care put into this film, which is what I appreciate most about it. So, the story of this film is about a girl called Raya and a different kind of depiction of Earth. This Earth is in ruins when this evil entity sort of thing called the Dune attack everybody and turn them into stone. And after a group of noble dragons band together using their powers of this sacred gem, the world is at peace for the most part until an occurrence in the present day causes the world to go to shit again. Now it may not sound like much on paper but it was translated to the big screen beautifully. A lot of concepts like this, you know that we live in a society sort of concepts just go down the drain or the ball all pretty much the same but this is actually beautifully stretched out and really interesting. It's such a breath of fresh air seeing all this fold up, the fact that Disney actually went the extra mile and made something different. I know Pixar are still coming up with original ideas, even if they butcher interesting concepts every now and then, but it's rare to see Disney do this, especially in the past couple of years. Okay, so just to clarify, I won't be spoiling anything in this review, so don't worry. Except for this part, because it must be said, everyone in the film dies. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm joking. So anyway, at the start of the film, Raya puts her trust in a certain character, which backfired immensely, which sets the moral of the story. And the meaning of that moral is trust, and that not everything is painted in black and white, that even if you fuck up and lose trust in everything you once knew, everything you once stood for, you can still find the light and trust in people again. Then, everybody in the movie dies. Okay, Jim Bob, stop it, man. This is a family-friendly film. Not cool. Not cool, man. Not cool. But I have to praise the animation in this film, because the animation is breathtakingly gorgeous. The detail, not only in the characters, but the world itself is beautiful. The colours just pop out of the screen. They're so vibrant, making it Disney's best looking movie for a long time. Especially this one shot where there's this giant armadillo thing swimming through the water and you can see like the detail in the waves crashing up against its shell. It's fucking gorgeous. Not only that, but the action in this film is also very good. It's not like Kung Fu Panda or Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse level of animation action, but really damn entertaining. So the hand-to-hand -hand combat is really fun to watch, the sword play is fun to watch. I mean, of course this is Disney, so it's not going to be too violent, but the action in this film is excellently animated and filmed. And besides the odd other human, the enemies in this film, as I mentioned earlier in the review, called the Dune, are actually really fascinating things because they're like this thick, smoky, foggy, eerie looking thing. It's like big purple fog or something like that. And it's really interesting because if you think about it, most films in media and stuff like that will portray like these creatures that have dominated the entire Earth as some kind of mutant or monster, but this thing is just simply like a cloud of fog. It's really interesting stuff. I also really enjoyed all of the voice acting in this film. We've got Kelly Marie Tran as Raya and she absolutely killed it and all around the voice acting is really good which is something you come to expect from Disney movies really but still I gotta praise it and I was having fun with the film for the most part even though it pretty much was let's go to this location and that location pretty much like a video game story but done with a little more depth but as the film went on I started to get a little worried about the whole abundance of characters that join Raya and Sisu's uh, little crusade thing we get this little boy who sells shrimp this big muscular dude from one of the rival tribes and this baby for some reason who is some kind of ninja and at first it was like the film kind of seemed like it was trying to squeeze 
delete all these characters in for the sake of having more characters and I was especially worried when this baby joined the crusade because I thought it was going to be annoying as hell but it wasn't it actually worked and for whatever reason this baby and these monkeys have these like high tech ninja skills I have no idea why but I love it it works so all of these characters all these side characters whether they're introduced early or late into the film they're all fleshed out just enough for you to resonate with them the only complaints I have with this is sometimes the movie has a habit of over explaining things about its concept and about its world it doesn't bother me all that much though to be honest and I'm not the biggest fan of the designs of the dragons but I'm guessing they didn't want to make them look too much like the dragons in how to train your dragon so again not that big of a deal and I'm sorry everybody but the dragon looks like Cusco I'm sorry but it does so overall guys, I really enjoyed Raya and the Last Dragon. It's such a breath of fresh air to see Disney finally make a good movie after all this time. And Raya and the Last Dragon is the best movie I've possibly seen in 2021 so far. Bear in mind I haven't seen that many, so it may change more than likely well when I see like Godzilla and stuff like that. But who knows? As of right now, it is the best film of the year that I've seen. Raya and the Last Dragon gets an A-. minus. Thank you very much guys for watching and I hope you liked it. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. If you like what I do here, consider clicking that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Remember, it's not just a movie, it's an experience. Take care everyone and stay awesome.